somebody I've been working closely with. She's someone I've been working closely with for the Fresh RX program. And just to recap, Fresh RX is really a, a partnership between local uh, federally qualified health clinics and either CSAs or farmers markets. And so, you know, this morning we've really been focused on all of the market managers who, who make the program work at the markets. But I thought it would be useful to just take a few minutes and get the clinic side of things. Um, and Alondra has more experience with this than I do. She was actually part of some of our first attempts to try to figure out how to make a program like this work. Um, and so without further ado, I would like you all to welcome Alondra and let's hear what uh, she has to say about FreshRx at her clinic. Hello everyone, my name is Alondra Hernandez and I'm a um, community health worker at La Familia Medical Center here in Santa Fe. And um, we were one of the you know, fortunate uh, clinical settings that um, were able to distribute the uh, fresh Rx to our patients. And um, the way it all started, it was, uh, we started uh, this partnership with fresh Rx in, since 2018. And um, the way the program started, uh, it was uh, we got, a total of, um, I believe um, we were able to distribute a total of four vouchers to 30 participants. And the vouchers had a value of uh, $25. And we had, um, I guess it was a way um, where the, where the market wanted to expand uh, and create uh, the South side market here in, in town. So that kind of helped um, bring people to the South Side market as well. So the way we were distributing the vouchers was um, once a month, it was $25 per month that the participant was able to take to the market and, and spend it on fresh fruits and vegetables. Um, also, we um, were doing another partnership with uh, Cooking with Kids. And that kind of like um, motivated our program to take our families out to the market and we were uh, doing cooking demos. The cooking demos were uh, all, uh, you know, all month long, but we were doing the cooking demos twice a month. And um, that's how we were trying to distribute the vouchers to kind of like bring the participants to the market and get it familiarized with it instead of just handing in out the paper and sending them off. Uh, because um, as we found out that same year, uh, it was really hard for people to go to the market um, either for transportation issues or you know, not um, the time that the market was um, happening, that was the time that they were uh, either at work or had other things going on. So that was kind of hard for them. and. Um, so the following year, what we decided to do, it's that we, um, and then, um, since we found that it was easier for us to distribute the, the vouchers at the market, we were uh, doing, um, we're, while we were doing the cooking demos, uh, we found that the redemption was higher that way, you know, and the market was placed where the, the buses were easily running, it was like an easy in and out way, and the participant didn't really have to walk that much. So we found that, you know, having accessibility for them um, in the way of transportation, that kind of helped them get to where they needed to get. Um, and they were still, you know, the 30 participants with the, the $100 uh, voucher that they were able to spend from July to October. Uh, we did found on 2019 that that was like the, highest redemption rate that we had along with the with the most compliant uh, participants. We didn't really have to reach out as much as we did on the first year. Um, you know, 2020, um, because of, you know, COVID pandemic stuff, uh, nothing really happened with us. But uh, this uh, past year for 2021, uh, we were able to still, you know, find 30 participants from our clinic, but um, the total distributing uh, 
vouchers that they received was a total of $320. And the people that we got, we were trying to, the, the vouchers are given to people with uh, chronic illnesses and uh, that have food insecurity. So, uh, you know, we were talking about people that, you know, had a limited budget or, uh, you know, didn't really qualify for SNAP benefits. So this money really helped them, you know, meet their monthly uh, goals, I guess, and food. And, um, you know, another, you know, thing that, good thing that happened is that they were not limited to use the vouchers only at the South Side Market. Now they were able to use them at any market. And that, uh, that not necessarily included our Santa Fe market. They could be used in, in the Española market as well. Because we found out that, you know, there were people in between that couldn't like really get to the market here in Santa Fe on time, but they were able to to go to the market in Española, so and they were able to use it at both places. So that kind of helped out a lot our participants and on the redemptions. Um, still, you know, transportation was like a big issue this year, and since we weren't able this year to be at the market and and meet them there, uh, I think that we kind of had like a like an issue uh, on redemption this year but uh you know as people got used to you know receiving the vouchers and, and getting familiarized on how to uh to exchange them for tokens i think it, it became like kind of like a routine to do it and just like the environment that they were in at the market i think that was like a, another invitation to bring them in and wanting to be outdoors and 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 get fresh fruits and vegetables Thank you, Alondra. And um, I was wondering if, if uh, Anna is still on the call from Santa Fe. I know that Anna spent a lot of time at the South Side Market this year. Anna, are you on the call? I am. Yeah, how did you feel about Fresh RX at your, at your Saturday market and at your Tuesday market? How did, it, how did it go for you guys? Well, the South Market got a lot more of those vouchers. And, um, and the, in our experience, uh, most every voucher or any program that happens at the South Market here in Santa Fe, the people who come and redeem those, they will pretty much spend all of it on the market on the same day. Um, at the Saturday Market, we've seen a share of the, of the vouchers as well, but not as many as at the South Market. Yeah, well, thanks for you know all of you making it work in Santa Fe and then you know, multiply Alondra by about 15 and you get an idea of what's going on in the state. Mm -hmm. Alondra is there in Santa Fe. We have clinic partners up in Las Vegas, uh, down in Silver City, over in Las Cruces, as, a, as well as in Albuquerque, um, Socorro, Berlin. So we're really trying to uh, reach as many different patients in different geographic areas as we can. And, you know, going forward, we'll be looking for new clinic partners and new markets, depending on funding depending on what we can, we can do with the federal government. But it's, it's really this partnership between the clinics and their local farmers markets that make it work. And it's, it's people like Alondra who are steering the patients to the markets for us and making sure they, they get there and understand how to navigate it. And um, it's really grateful and looking forward to really another great year with maybe more participation at the markets with fewer COVID restrictions, um, maybe getting some more of the community health workers to the markets with their patients definitely more cooking demos and, and things like that. So thank you, Alondra. Does anybody have any questions for Alondra? I have a, I have a further kind of a comment about, um, especially at the Southside Market, it gave us a great opportunity to be in front of people so that they understood the importance and relevance of having the access to the to delicious local nutritious foods. And so it gave us the opportunity to talk about other programs that exist. Um, we saw, you know, people might've gotten the fresh RX, but then we saw them maybe if they had their SNAP dollars being able to come back and do the double up program. Yeah. Um, so it was it was a fantastic access point, even though it's not a huge pocket of money as compared to the SNAP double up program, it's an avenue towards it for people. So it was 
think it ended up being very educational and bringing a lot of people into the fold who might have previously been nervous about coming to a farmer's market, not knowing if it was for them or were they allowed to be there? Is this exclusive? Is it tourist based? Things like that. So uh, it was it, it's really nice to see those folks come to our markets. Yeah, I definitely agree with you on that one. Um, you know, I think that um, having a like a permanent place on the south side will be like a great uh, way to to bring more people in. Um, you know, the most people that I've ever seen was at the when the market was at the what was it Plaza Contenta by Jaguar. I think that was when when most people like wanted to out. I don't know if it was because it was close to schools or what was the environment there, but I found that you know uh, we got a really good crowd of people when when we were there. Yep, I did not pay a loaner to say that, um, but it's a conversation that's happening up in Santa Fe about um, the South Side versus rail yards and and how to meet the needs of the entire community. Um, and, and keep both both locations really vibrant and, and running. And Presbyterian is part of that conversation as well. Um, anybody have any other questions about Fresh RX specifically or, or for Alondra? Well, thanks for coming by today, Alondra. I look forward to uh, launching again this summer with you. Well, I, George, did you have your hand up? Oh, sorry, George, you're on mute, so we can't hear you. can't do this right. My hand's not pointing my fingers. My question is, or comment is, towards the end of the year, one of my vendors called and said, George, I have some people here that have the fresh RX vouchers, almost $300 worth, and they have not used it. Can they use it now? I said, our markets are closed. They absolutely cannot. Mm -hmm. So I would suggest when they get those vouchers, they go to a farmer's market. And not necessarily ours, but ours would be a good place to go and redeem those vouchers for fresh fruits and vegetables. I think that would be a great, great solution. They, yes, they do expire. They, um, they just didn't have any clues to where to go. I'm thinking maybe they need more direction when they receive the vouchers as to where to go to for those voucher redemptions. Did, uh, did you ask which market those ones came from? Or I'm sorry, which clinic they came from? I did not, in my okay. apologies. Right, and the, the vouchers themselves expire, the tokens do not. Um, and the vouchers expire to help people like Alondra out, to put a little sense of urgency into the patients so that they will actually go to the market and use the vouchers. Um, the feeling is, and, and the, the, they, the research shows that if, if you don't have an expiration date, they just sit in people's junk drawers, you know? Um, so that's why there's that expiration date, but the tokens don't expire, uh, but yeah. it is, it is also an opportunity to teach people about seasonality because it does say a December date as the expiration, but most most of the markets that do fresh are exposed on like the end of October, but not all of them. So um, that's good information. So Kirsten can pass it along to some of the other clinics. Alondra, you want to say something? Yes, I want to share something that, that we did with our participants and this uh, we created like a kind of like an extra sheet to hand out to our patients as to where to go look for the um, for the booth that was like the information booth that they were able to redeem their vouchers into tokens uh, you know and we um, had those for the south side market and for the rail yard so they kind of know uh knew or had an idea to what to look for you know as they either where they enter the building or go towards the the end of the line and look for the for the fresh rx uh sign or the farmer's market sign that was like the the main clue 
that we were giving out so that they wouldn't be struggling just with the voucher alone. Right. We found, um, we know from our partners around the country too that getting people to the market the first time is the biggest challenge. Not everybody has visited a farmer's market before. Not everybody is comfortable approaching a welcome table and, and exchanging their voucher for tokens. And uh, not everybody's comfortable approaching a vendor and asking whether they can use their tokens there or how much of a tomato costs. So all of those things are, are actually things that we need to work out as part of the program. And our goal is to get as many patients as comfortable at the markets and to get them to come back as often as we can. Somebody, asking, somebody was asking how we qualify, how patients qualify. I just want to let them know real fast. Um, farmers market managers and Kirsten do not enroll patients. Alondra enrolls the patients. So if somebody comes to you and wants to know how to, how to participate, really the easiest answer, they can always reach out to me or you can send them, you know, say that um, certain clinics around the state participate, ask at your clinic whether or not they participate. Um, it's really just a very few clinics compared to the number of clinics that are operating around the state. The, the way that we were screening our patients is, um, you know, since it was only limited to 30 participants, we had to like really look through. And what we were doing, it, we were doing um, people with uh, chronic health conditions that had uh, food insecurity. So um, based on those two, you know, we had a questionnaire for them and that helped us kind of like break down the, the people that was gonna be put in that list. And of course, you know, you get these people that decline participation as well. So uh, we have to like make sure that we have enough people in case somebody declines, we can, uh, we can put somebody else immediately to take over their spot. Right. Um, and another thing that Alondra did and every other clinic did was they administered those surveys um, for me. And uh, surveys like that were administered all over the country. And the good news was that our, at our big conference about a month ago, was that indeed people getting the vouchers from people like Alondra, the, the customers were actually eating more fruits and vegetables because of the vouchers. And the surveys that she uh, and other clinicians administered helped help document that for us. So that was a big win for the programs around the country. And uh, it's all thanks to the data that the that health clinics are co collecting for us. So another aspect that's really important. Lots of questions coming in about food hubs and farm stands and fresh RX. Um, real briefly, it's a small program money-wise. We want to make sure that if I'm going to ask you to do all the paperwork and the bureaucracy to run the program, that there will be enough uh, customers coming through to make it worth your while. Therefore, the number of markets and hubs participating is kind of limited now, and it's really limited by the funding, not by uh, our vision. We would love to get have enough money um, to send lots more patients to lots more places. And we will keep working on that. But for now, what we're doing is being very strategic about if there's a clinic in a certain area, partnering with the markets and outlets that are closest to them, and then limiting the number of those so that whoever's taking on this burden that is fresh RX at a market, that their farmers are getting enough money uh, out of the program to make it worth their while. If somebody shows up with one voucher throughout the season, you've had to sit through this training and deal with me, it's totally not worth it, totally not worth it. But we'll keep working toward you know, expansion and absolutely food hubs, absolutely farm stands. You guys are on our radar screen, I promise. Um, parking and access as an issue. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, we know it is. And uh, one thing that Alondra and I and all the clinicians talk about is fresh RX is not for everybody. It's not for every patient. Uh, if they you can be food insecure and homeless and Fresh RX doesn't work very well if you're homeless, you have to be able to cook. Uh, Fresh RX doesn't work if you're too frail to visit the market or to cook. Um, so there are other programs out there to address some of that food insecurity, but you know, the, in addition to that sort of chronic illness and the need to eat healthier vegetables and fruit and food insecurity, you also need to be able to navigate the market and prepare the food. So it, it it's definitely not a, a program that works for every patient, but it does work for a lot. 
Um, the same could be said about double up to a certain extent too. Um, of course you could have an apple or a tomato or something that doesn't need to be cooked, but um, having access to a microwave, a hot plate, a refrigeration, um, knives and a cutting board somewhere clean to put any of those things is something that not all SNAP recipients or uh, patients have access to. Um, you know, homeless, if you're homeless, even if you're in a shelter, you don't necessarily have access to even a microwave. And so there is definitely a segment of lower income customers that would be using either of our programs that it's maybe not the best match for a lot of reasons. And Jessica, you're asking specifically about elderly folks and disabled folks um, getting their stuff back to the car. And actually your organization is part of that solution because Latrell um, provides um, bags to our first choice clinics down in Albuquerque and the patients can actually just pick up a bag of produce at the clinic. And I, am, I have seen with my own eyes that folks at the clinic help people carry their bags and navigate their bags. So a big shout out to La Cosecha um, for helping with that. Um, and I, I do think that one way to address the needs of elderly and disabled will for, going forward will be more and more of the sort of CSA produce bag rather than having to have them park and, and navigate the market. But my ultimate goal is to let a patient decide what is the best match for them, eventually to be able to offer most patients an option of either a CSA type option or going to the market so that they can decide what's right for themselves and their families. Any other questions before we let Alondra get back to her day? Well, thanks a lot for coming Alondra. I look forward to, to hanging out this summer at the market with you. Thank you. Have a good meeting. Bye, everyone. Bye. I'm oh, sorry, I'm having technical difficulties here. Yes, David, talking about transportation, um, some people who run programs like mine base them at senior centers and the senior centers actually provide the transportation. So there, there are ways to get around the transportation piece um, that we can definitely continue to explore. All right, so jumping back in for the rest of the afternoon, we're gonna talk about technology solutions for growing outlets and then we'll talk about the new eligibility and after that we'll talk about the market manager vendor training so if you are a single point of sale outlet you can leave at that point because it's not relevant but if you're a market manager you can stay on and we'll go over vendor training in depth for you so getting started with the technology solutions. A lot of you guys are growing a lot quickly, which is great. Um, and there are technology solutions available to make running the programs a little bit easier. Um, and a lot of the single point of sale outlets have moved from having like a really low tech solution for their cash register, like they've moved from having a cash box to having a, a point of sale system. And now they've leveled up again to something like uh, Clover, which is, it looks kind of like an iPad, but it can, it can take EBT cards. It's kind of like Square, but Square can't do EBT. So, if you are a single point of sale outlet and you're looking to expand your point of sale system or you already have, and I just don't know about it, you can run a report at the end of the month that shows 
the total SNAP sales, the total number of SNAP transactions, the total Double Up Food Bucks discount, and the total number of Double Up customers, that will go into it. Like you can either take a screen capture of that report or you can export it into uh, Excel and send me the Excel. And that will count as your customer record sheet and your third party verification of sales. And that way you're not having to keep paper records. And the way that you get the discount into a place that you can easily and quickly have the total amount is you go into your settings and you set a discount like you would for a coupon or like an employee discount. You can either have a 50% off that you only ever use for double up, or you can have like name a discount that's called double up food bucks. And when your cashier is going through and giving them the discount, it selects the, the discount is selected. And then it, it totals, it gets everything done. Nobody has to write anything down. Um, and then you just run the report it's very easy and quick. So if you are doing something like that already and let me know and we can switch you to that kind of reporting or if you're looking into doing something like that, we can get it set up so that you're doing it. It works real smoothly and we're not having, you know, the single point of sale outlets, the market managers probably don't know, they get binders that are like, just full overflowing with customer record sheets. So it can get pretty difficult to keep up with it all. Um, if that's something that you're interested in, let me know. Also, if you're using a single point of sale system that you have an EBT machine that is also doing other things, you can run the EBT machine or the single point of sale, run a report off of that. If it's not just a regular batch report, you can get a, a report from the back end. You can send me those instead of keeping track of the individual batch reports for every day, and then just keep the double up records on a customer record sheet. If that's easier, um, I am very much happy to work with anybody about using technology to do the reporting instead of doing it all on paper. But I'm, I think a lot of people don't know that's an option. So it, I'm not getting told that you have all of this great technology that makes your reporting easier. So, uh, if you are a farmer's market that is outgrowing just having an EBT machine and customer record sheets. There's, there's something called Market Link that is now available. It plugs into your phone. It, it's just like Square, it, but it's for farmers markets using Snap and EBT, and it also takes credit and debit. So if you're interested in that, you can look at Market Link. They have grants for farmers markets to get discounted rates on things. Um, I can get you in touch with a sales rep. The website can also get you in touch with a sales rep. And um, then you can also, again, run a report on the back end instead of keeping track of a whole bunch of different little slips of receipt paper. You might still need to do the customer record sheet depending on what kind of package that you end up getting. But this is a good solution if you are growing or if you are at a market that doesn't have service with AT&T or T-Mobile, because you can run it off your phone. So if you've got Verizon or another carrier that your cell phone gets service at your market, but the FIS machine does not, you can switch to using Market Link. There will be a little bit more cost involved, but we could talk about one-on-one, -on -one, we can talk about ways to make it more cost-effective for your outlet. Uh, and then the last thing that I wanted to mention quickly is that if you're doing FreshRx or Double Up Food Bucks and you would like to get ACH deposits for your 
Tumble up food bucks or fresh RX money. You can do ACH now. You don't have to have a check. Jackie's asking if people use their personal phones for this <coughs> to run market link. Are they using their own personal mm -hmm. phones? Yeah. Yeah. Um, we also have money in our grant, the, the new GUSNIP grant. If somebody needs a tablet to be to work on market double up fresh rx related stuff we can get you a tablet and um tablets sometimes depending on which ones you can buy they can also connect to things like market link things like market link so um definitely if you're interested and it's a situation where you're EBT machines not working because of connectivity issues or whatever, and you don't have money to get one for yourself, let me know and we'll see what we can do. Oops. Especially in Rama. Rama's very far out there and phones don't work good. Any other questions? Oh, uh, this is a little bit more information about how to do reporting with a Clover or with an EBT machine that's not an FIS machine. Yeah, it um, I'm sorry, I'm reading the chat box. Right. Yes, you can use debit with market link. The EBT machines from FIS do not do debit or credit. This is not in line of what, Stephen? Not sure we, we understand where you're headed, Stephen. This is not, yes? It is in place of an EBT machine. So FIS will give you, give a market a wireless EBT machine, or they'll give a single point of sale direct outlet. So not something that would be considered a grocery store, something that'd be considered a farm stand, uh, a, a wired EBT machine for free. Um, but they, the wireless ones don't always work for markets because of connectivity or a few other reasons. So that's just a, an option if your EBT from FIS is not working for you. All right, okay. So now we'll talk about new eligibility. The new double up eligibility includes frozen, canned and dried products. <laughs> Another thing to celebrate. This is big news and I know all of you've been waiting for it. Sarah is ecstatic. Can't you tell? I, that was, it was in my ears. It so ear. I, I am very excited about that. Um, <laughs> But so it, it, if it was New Mexico grown and it is fresh, frozen, canned, dried, lightly processed, and it is a fruit or vegetable staple food, as long as it doesn't have added sugar, fat, oil, or salt, it is now double up food bucks eligible, which does include roasted chili because it's lightly processed and it doesn't have to be fresh at the point of sale now. So some examples of what that means is roasted green chili, 100% juice, frozen roasted green chili, Chico's, dehydrated fruits and vegetables, all beans, still plants that produce food, still all of the other things that used to be eligible, but lightly processed without uh, salt, oil, Fats or what's the, the fourth one? Salt, oil, sugar. Sugar, yes. No added sugar. So no cotton candy. Okay, Rhonda. Cotton candy is not, it's still not on Double Up Food Bugs, but we're trying. We're going to get there. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen really quick and ask you guys to chime in about what things you might have questions about 
with the new eligibility. So we've got um, seasonings, a question about seasonings. Yes, if it has seasonings on it, it's ready to go, except for if it's salt or sugar or fat or oil. Legislation requires the people with lots of sugar. I don't sugar. know if this is coming through that or not. Applesauce. If it is not, if there's no added sugar, if it's just plain applesauce, then that is acceptable. Pickles and kimchi. If there's no added salt, sugar, fat, or oil, then pickles and kimchi are fine. If you can make pickles without salt. Yep. Where is this list available? I mean, is this coming out of legislation like the things with the cotton candy? I didn't quite see those things in there about the juice. Um, maybe I missed oh, it's it. In your, it should be in your market manager guide that we mailed out to you. But oh, it's okay. also not explicit, right? Okay. So we're in, in the manager guide and in all of the written documents, it says um, New Mexico grown produce. That's a staple food that is n not that lightly processed, but no added sugar, salt, fat, or oil. So does that explicitly say apple juice? It does not. Um, and having an actual list of like every single thing that would or would not be eligible, it would be kind of impossible to, to actually make it. That's why we're gonna, we're gonna play this game. We uh, talk about what that could or couldn't mean. So apple juice that does not have added sugar is lightly processed New Mexico grown. So it has to be New Mexico apples, right? But there's a lot of uh, uh, vendors that make apple cider in the fall. So as long as there's no added sugar, then the apple cider would be okay. Well, is, is this derivative of House Bill 177? It's from the farm bill. It's from the last farm bill. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah, so all of the regulations for SNAP and Double Up and Fresh RX are from the Farm Bill. They're not from New Mexico state laws at all. Okay. Um, the the GUSNIP grant right now allows for, we allow everything that is allowed federally, except for we have the stipulation that it has to be New Mexico grown which is not a requirement federally, but it's a requirement from the Farmers Market Association. Sarah, I have a question related to that. This New Mexico legislation, they, they allow um, home, home produced baked goods like pies and, and jams and jellies. And, and that seems like it's in conflict because they, they allow things with high sugar content. And so how so do that? high sugar content any, what I'm talking about right now is double up food bucks eligibility. Not so SNAP. SNAP can buy any food that is something that's meant for human consumption and not oh. hot at the point of sale. So SNAP oh. tokens, the wooden ones can be spent on pies, on cotton candy, on... Um, okay, I think I just didn't realize you were talking about the double up food bucks token. Okay. Yep, so this is only for the silver tokens. Okay, thank you for the clarification. We have a question about red chili powder. Red chili powder is uh, an accessory food. So let me explain the difference between an accessory food and a staple food. A staple food is something that you would just eat, right? Um, like spaghetti squash, is could be used like spaghetti. Um, that's something you just eat or cauliflower could be turned into cauliflower rice and then you can make pizza with it. That would still be a staple food because it's made, you can eat it like cauliflower rice, but something like um, chili powder, you can't just eat that. That's not just like a food you would have on your plate. So that makes it into an accessory food. And so, um, and accessory foods are no-nos. Right. They're snap tokens only. So that includes jams and jellies, anything that's not something that you would 
just have on your plate? Freeze dried, dehydrated, uh, allowable. Freeze dried and dehydrated, allowable as long as there's no added fruit, uh, sugar, salt, fat, or oils. And straight up frozen too. Yep, real frozen if you have a freezer. Frozen roasted green chili is now okay with the silver tokens. Um, I cannot answer the question about needing to license for food plants through the state. Nope. No, you don't need to license those. Uh, I mean, no, I don't, I don't know. Can't I can't that. answer that. Um, uh, vegetable starts and and um, fresh herbs are still, still still part of it. Yep. I say no to dried herbs because I feel like they're too close to us. I don't feel like there's any way that they could be used as something other than accessory food. And yeah, roasted green chili is actually a food. Um, uh, compared to um, compared to a powder, compared to a powdered red chili, um, chilies they're they come in, they're coming off a plant. They're fresh. Um, they're whole. They're like, whole. You could eat a roasted green chili by itself, and but lots of people do eating like people don't eat powdered chili out of the bag. So that it it would be an accessory food like uh any kind of other spice that you would add to a food um Questa you've got your hand up yeah thanks okay it's like a small distinction I guess basically but it does say I'm looking at page 14 <laughs> manager has like under double up food books eligible it says fresh cut canned frozen or dried without any added salt fresh herbs and then over here on incentive ineligible it says processed herbs and that's so so like dried herbs and processed herbs what's the difference what's the difference salt salt like yeah. mixtures uh, uh, yeah i don't i mean maybe someone would want to buy like dried mint for tea so this is what you just <laughs> That I would say no, okay. not double up. Just use the snap token. Okay, okay. And it, these are the conversations that we spend months on. They're stupid. We understand. And if it were up to us, it, it would be much simpler than this. But it's not up to us. And some of the the way that the grant itself is written is a little sketchy, vague, and so I have to use my best best judgment. And eventually you'll have to use your best judgment, but you can call me anytime. If your market is open, I will try to answer the phone. And there's some conversations in the snap. I just want to reiterate what hasn't changed about Double Up is it still has to be fruit or vegetable. So there's still no bread, there's still no meat, there's still no milk or eggs or cheese or even nuts. Um, all of those things are SNAP eligible, though. So you use wooden tokens for all of those things and silver tokens for other for fruits for and plants. vegetables. Yeah. Silver tokens for plants, silver tokens for produce, wood SNAP tokens for bread, um, meat, anything that's not fresh fruits and vegetables. So don't like, don't, we are talking about only double up and snap and double up are two different programs completely, right? So snap is still the same. Any food meant for human consumption that is not hot at the point of sale and double up, which is silver tokens is fruit, fruits and vegetables. And New Mexico. Yes, and New Mexico. So like earlier, um, Questo was asking about produce that was grown in Colorado is it ever double up eligible the answer is no but people can use their snap tokens their wooden ones um Orion and then Rhonda and then George okay my question uh so what do you guys call Chico's I think that's the same as we have the Neshiji which is a roasted and then they dry it but uh, so if they're selling it on the cob the chicos 
and it's hot, then that would make it a hot item, right? Correct. Yep. Which means it is not SNAP eligible and it is not double up eligible. So if the if the chicos are taking off the cob and they're and they're like in a bag or something, um, then they are double up eligible. And SNAP eligible. Yeah. The the issue with the USDA is if it's hot at the point of sale because they don't want people using their SNAP benefits to buy food at a restaurant. That's okay. And, then, there. and but so, so you know, a breakfast burrito, a hot corn, anything that's hot when you buy it is not eligible for either program. And scooped ice cream wouldn't be either. He's right. An ice cream cone doesn't work either. Yeah, it does. Because you can, you can take an ice. It's not hot. So you can take. What's the point of okay. hot ice cream? So Chris is saying. I I thought he was right. He said that it's anything to be consumed on site. Scooped ice cream is in a cone is not SNAP eligible. Mm, you don't have to eat it on site. Same thing with like if you. So if you go into the gas station. And Sorry you, about that. I answered wrong. Go ahead. If you go into the gas station and you get a uh, uh, a cup of soda from Circle K, your EBT benefits will pay for that. And you can take it off site. You can go drink it outside. You could also stand in the back and drink it. That would be weird, but you could. Um, the same thing is true at a farmer's market. If you go to somebody who's selling um, a juice or uh, a cold drink, you can buy it with SNAP tokens. You could stand in front of the place that sold it to you and drink it there. But you could not. You could choose to go walk around. You could choose to go stand thirty feet away. So, so not a vendor. it's um. So it really is the hot that makes it's the hot. Okay. And so you could sell ice cream with SNAP tokens, right? Not double up with SNAP, and have the person is probably going to eat it at your farm stand, or if you had an ice cream truck at your farmer's market. They're, they're probably going to still eat it while they're at the farmer's market, but they wouldn't have to. They could go get in their car and drive away. Chris, is, Chris is, has some other things, but we, we can go into these details in a minute. Um, people are asking about corn for grinding. Ground corn? Corn for grinding. Like it's still whole. It's still whole, then that's fine. fine. If it's already ground up, it kind of loses the argument about... Um, being a fruit or vegetable, and it kind of turns more into a grain. Plant starts are fine um, if they're going to turn into food, not baby rose bushes. Uh, Rhonda and Joe. So it seems like with these double up expanded options, they're kind of crossing over into the notion of processing, which affects other things. Is that correct? And but yeah, there's well, no lightly rules. processed is okay now. There's no rules related to, you know, where that's done or any of that. Correct. Still, all ha still, all has to be New Mexico. Well, I understand that, but I mean, there's no rules that has to do with your kitchen or anything like that or where it's processed locally. Does as it? far as the double up and rules go, no. If your local government or the state government has rules about where things are processed, then um, you would have to follow those rules. But as far as the USDA and the tokens are concerned, it's not, um, okay. it's not part of the double up program. That's part of local and state rules. Thank you. Yep. George? I believe that when the Double Up Food Buck program came around, as well as SNAP, they want people to eat healthy. And they have, because of the Double Up program, they set that up to be something that would be for fruits and vegetables. And I think that was the main cause of it. That's all in the comments. Thank you. Yeah, and you know, the SNAP, you can buy a lot of really unhealthy food with your SNAP. And that is not on us. It's not our job to police the SNAP at all. Um, and that I think that's probably why Double Up continues to be kind of narrow is to make sure that that healthy option is 
is always there and then it's always healthy. And that's why there's no added sugar, salt, fat, or oils for double up food boxes to continue to keep having the incentive program as healthy, a healthy food incentive. But with SNAP, um, yeah, you can buy candy, you can buy soda, you can buy lots of things that are unhealthy, but it's it's not our place to judge other people about what they're putting in their body. And um, so as much as we have our thoughts about eating healthy or not eating healthy, it's um, we need to make sure that we're providing dignity for all of our customers, even if we don't agree with what they're doing with their money. That's our little spiel. Yep. So no, George is right. I'm not saying that he's wrong. It, the point of Double Up is to provide healthy food. Uh, Pauline? So consumed, So I thought consumed on site meant consumed at the farmer's market, but that just means consumed in front of the vendor that you bought it from. That when I asked last summer, because the, I had a market manager asking me about the drinks thing, I asked FNS and they said that if, as long as it wasn't in front of the vendor, then it was fine. As so you, so, so somebody could buy one cookie now and it would be snap eligible. As long as it's not hot at the point of sale. Okay. It's confusing, huh? It is confusing. It's because it used to be like you could buy a you could buy a package of cookies with Snap, but not a single cookie that you eat at market. Um, yeah. When I asked last summer, the person I talked to said that as long as it wasn't at the booth and it was not hot, then it was okay. Don't you love this? Isn't this fun? And to be honest, I'm sure that you could call FNS and talk to a different person and they would interpret the rule a little bit differently. So a lot of this is um, making your best judgment about the intention. And the intention for SNAP is not hot and meant for human consumption. Well, so and it's really a sort of on the vendor to understand all these rules. Thank in you order. for bringing up vendor training. That is perfect. <laughs> Pauline. So, <laughs> are we joking with you, Pauline? But yeah, and then the it same, is, it's a lot. The same with Double Up. The intention of that program is healthy food that is a New Mexico grown fruit or vegetable. So there is a certain amount of discretion and a certain amount of interpretation of the rule. We're getting questions about canned and jarred vegetables. If you can can or jar it without any preservatives, right? No salt, no sugar, no added fats. Um, so, you know, in theory that can happen. So those are those under for double up, those would be fine. As long as, as long, everything in that jar is New Mexico grown, right? No added fats, no added sugars, no oils, no salt. Um, somebody was asking about jams and jellies, jams and jellies without sugar, ick. Also their accessory foods. So again, here we go around and around. There's also in, in the binder, in your market manager guide on the page where it, it, it's explaining what's eligible and what's not, which uh, is different on the two if you have a single point of sale or a farmer's market. So I think uh, somebody said that it's page 14 for the farmer's markets. There's also uh, links there that you can go to to the USDA, to the USDA website that talks about what an accessory food is or isn't. And then we'll continue the conversation about what is SNAP eligible or not. Now, again, Sarah and I are not in charge of SNAP. We have subsets of SNAP. So sometimes the SNAP questions, we may not be 100% on. And if you have any, you want a definitive answer, go beyond Sarah and me, go to SNAP, go to the USDA. You can also call that 877 number that I mentioned earlier and talk to somebody there um, if you have a super specific question. Uh, spirulina, I made a call that that is only SNAP eligible and not double up eligible because a USDA representative will not tell me if 
it is a plant or not. So Rhonda is asking um, if the, the jars have to be labeled. That would be a, a, a local or state government question, not a double up food bucks program question. Some year we can invite a USDA person here if you guys want, and we can talk about snap rules more specifically, um, get an expert in for that. George, is your hand still up from before? Do you have another question, comment? Good question, I don't know. Okay, if you figure it out, let me know. One of these days I will. The main point though, let's, you know, as we all like take our heads back out of this little rabbit hole where we're, where we're gone. The main point is that suddenly more items are eligible for double up. Customers are gonna have more choice and uh, that's a great thing. Um, they're still on the healthy path, but we've expanded it, well, not us, the government has expanded it so that they have a few more choices. And hopefully they can, they can buy things that they can keep you know, in their freezers for longer or in their pantry. So that's a really good thing. It's a win for everybody. And we are sitting here on the, you know, the end of February, beginning of March, talking about what is or isn't eligible with these new rules. Uh, but when the markets open, we're going to have, we're all going to have a whole lot more questions because actual products are going to start showing up and we're going to have questions about them. If you do, you can call me or Kirsten when your markets open, even if it's on the weekend, don't promise we'll pick up, but we will try our best to answer questions in real time. Denise Miller would like us all to remember that, um, you know, there are rules about things coming out of, uh, out of kitchens. So things sold at farmer's markets, um, they can be in a jar, but they have to be coming out of the correct kind of kitchen. There has to be some training behind that. There has to be some labeling. And that's all sort of on, as, as Sarah said, uh, state and local rules, but Denise is reminding us of the state and local cottage industry stuff. And they have changed, those rules have changed. So Rail Yards has a question or comment. Yeah, just a quick question, sorry to keep going round and round, but uh, our understanding was like anything like beverage wise sold in a jar or can was SNAP eligible versus like say an Agua Fresca that you put a straw in and consumed on site was not eligible. So I just kind of wanted to clarify that because that will really change a lot for us. They are SNAP eligible. Agua's Frescas in a cup is SNAP eligible. Anytime you go to a convenience store and you stand behind somebody in line and they're buying a big gulp with their EBT. So all beverages, except coffee. Why not coffee then? Right, well, hot tea is hot. hot tea. Okay, fair. Uh, no nuts for Fresh RX. No nuts for double up food bucks either, except for peanuts are now double up eligible as long as they're not added salt, sugar, fat, or oil. Peanuts. I mean, then they have to be New Mexico grown, but we do grow peanuts in the Eastern part of the state. Um, Rhonda and, and Joe. So I think I am understanding that um, some of these double up new expanded options, in order to do that, you may have to go through the requirements from uh, the state legislation, just the labeling or whatever, just to have those. Is that correct? It's like a filter. Yes. Okay. Thank yeah. you, Denise, for clarifying that. And again, all of this we're talking about, it's the silver tokens. It's not even Fresh RX, unfortunately. It would be nice if Fresh RX and Double Up completely aligned. And now we have at least two years in which they don't. And a lot of that is based on the RFA from, so the RFA means uh, like the application that Denise does for us to have these programs, I'll, I'll, most of, if almost all of the rules that Kirsten and I program follow are from the RFA. So a lot of it is 
vague and not in our control, but we can interpret what it means. And we will continue this conversation. I think we should start thinking more about vendor training now, folks, because eligibility is also part of vendor training. We have about an hour left, and I think it would be a good idea to keep moving on to vendor training, which I know was your favorite part of last season. So un unless anybody has uh, a quick question, the single point of sale folks are welcome to head on to the rest of their day. At one point, there was a question in the chat that was um, asking you to explain the difference between single point of sale and farmers markets. Could you do right. that really briefly? So a single point of sale outlet is um, an outlet that's not a farmer's market. Uh, it could be a farm stand, a grocery store, a CSA. Some of the food hubs in New Mexico are starting to offer food boxes directly from the food hub. But basically, they're just double up outlets that do not use tokens. And Rhonda, roasted peanuts, no salt. I think under the new rules, roasted peanuts, no salt could be either double up or snap. Correct. Looking for more information, refer to your manager guide and call us with questions um, or email or email. Maybe someday we'll make a definitive list, but the problem is then somebody will call and say, but what about this? We, we can't always think about every scenario. So sometimes it's best just to reach out. The USDA, oh, USDA also does not publish a definitive list. It, if you ask them about one particular item, they're gonna read you the rule that says food meant for human consumption that is not hot at the point of sale. If you are a CSA, if you are a farm stand, you get to go, but thank you for coming. <laughs> and we are more than happy to answer questions from you. Um, shoot us some emails, give us a call, whatever works for, for you all. Yep. All right, so now that we are here, the vendor training, I'm gonna give uh, Kirsten, give you guys over to Kirsten. She's gonna talk about that. No. I think George has a question too. If you guys want to just go to George real quick before we. Oh, sure. On. Sorry, George. That's okay. I'm used to it. The comment is any plant that is grown for resale must be licensed through the New Mexico Department of Agriculture with a license that is sold to you. There are farmers markets that can belong to this with our farmers that grow just for that farm. And they want to sell at our farmers market, they can do that. But other than that, everybody that needs to sell or wants to sell something that they've grown must be licensed by the uh, USDA. They sell it more than the market also. Thank you, George. Yep. All right. So we've got, we're going to start with uh, another video, and we're going to cover a lot. And so we're going to ask you guys to hold questions until the end. So if you have a question while we're going through all of this, write it down and we'll answer at the end of the presentation, with the exception of we're going to go through the online training with you guys. When we are going through the online training, we'll stop like at the end of each little section. If you have a question about that specific page, right, then we'll answer a question. But if it's just kind of a uh, a question that's not about that actual page, then we'll take all of the questions at the end. So we're going to play a video. And then when the video is done, all of us are going to do the online vendor training together and see if we pass. Um, so sit tight for the, vi the video. Here it comes. Now let's take a look at vendor training. 
Because both Fresh Rx and Double Up Food Bucks depend on federal funds, vendors must be trained in the basics of SNAP and in how to participate in the programs every year. Vendors complete training online. They should receive information on how to access the online course in an email from the NMFMA. If a vendor does not receive an invitation to take the online course, you can fill out the form called Request Talent LMS Username and Password on the Market Manager portal in the Vendor Training section. Once a vendor has completed the online training, they will receive a certificate and a vendor ID. Vendors who complete the course will present you with their certificates, or you can provide them with one. It is important that you record the vendor's ID number on your approved vendor list and year-end vendor summary sheet. If the vendor cannot access the online course, you can provide them with a printed training booklet. Once they have read and understood the booklet, you should fill out the certificate in the middle of the booklet. You will need to provide the vendor with an ID number that starts with a three letter code found in your market manager guide. After the market closes for the day, enter the information on the certificate into the new vendor form available on the market manager portal in the vendor training section. Every vendor trained in SNAP, FreshRx, and DoubleUp should display the certificate at their booth. Now let's take a look oh. at this. All right, so we'll talk about um, a vendor certificate if the vendor took the training online. So if, you have, if your vendor took the training online, hopefully they had a printer. If they did, they were able to print their own certificate. They should bring that to you and then you can add them to your approved vendor list, right? Um, and it's really important to be on top of that approved vendor list so that you, as the season progresses, you know who's taken the training and who hasn't um, just to, for your own reference. You can also check with us, but if you keep that list up to date, you're in good shape. Um, if they have printed off their own uh, certificate, hand them a sheet protector and really encourage them to hang that certificate at their booth. It, it makes a big difference to my customers, for example, to Sarah's customers. They know that they can use their tokens at that booth. They don't have to work up the courage to ask the farmer, can I use my tokens here? Um, that's the real one of the real pluses of having something to, to display. We'll also provide sheet protectors so you do not have to go out and buy them. When we send the booklets, we will also send blank certificates and um, sheet protectors. Of course, not everybody has a printer. So if they've taken the course online, um, we would like them to come to you with that vendor ID that they receive at the end of the course. They can then um, Put that ID, you can put that ID on a certificate that we will provide you along with some of the, the um, sheet protectors. So in other words, if they don't have a printer, they're going to come to you and you're going to give them that certificate. And again, you're going to write down their information and add them to that approved vendor list for your market so that you can keep track of who's selling, who's taking the training, who's approved, and also have all their information for end of year reporting.
So now we're going to have Kirsten walk us through the uh, actual training on the website. Whoops. Give me a second. Just if you do share. So some of you might have done this last year um, because you're vending or because it's out of curiosity. Um, but basically, this is the first screen that your vendors will be greeted with. And we're going to choose the Spanish, uh, Spanish course, not the, not the Spanish, the English course, sorry. They do have a, an option of doing Spanish. And if a vendor requested last year that their, their preferred language was English, they're gonna get a link directly towards the English. And if they preferred Spanish, then they'll get the link to Spanish. If they did not say a preference last year, they'll get the option to do either one. He was, we need to change our view. Hold on a second. Yep. There, there we go. Um, this first page is just for your vendors to, to know how to work their way through the course. We feel like it's a little bit wordy. We'll work on that next year. <laughs> um, again, Sarah's information's there, my information's there, um, as well as Michael's. So they do have folks they can reach out to rather than calling you at midnight. Okay, send them to us. Just a nice welcome some of the goals of the training. And again, the goals of the training really is so that when people show up at their booth with tokens, they know what to do with them without breaking any really important rules. Oh, um, at the end of these pages, there's a question that for some reason isn't showing that. up right now, but the questions all have to do with information that was are in on the page that they're mm -hmm. at. So the last one was probably, a, oh, she's gonna pull it up. I was just trying to go back as a learner. It had put us back in instructor mode. Oh, okay. Hold on, let me see if I can scroll through so we can get the questions. Keep talking, you're doing good. Okay, it says completed though. Well, they'll have questions at the bottom of each page and the vendor will answer the question in order to get to the next page. We've got questions about a SNAP participation, double up participation and fresh RX. So if a vendor is not vending at a fresh RX market, they're still going to get that information through this training even if that means that the only thing they know about it is that they shouldn't take the token at the market, then they will know to not take a fresh RX token at an outlet that's not participating. So, and so we thought we'd stop at this slide in particular. Um, that we had some long conversations about SNAP already today, but some of the numbers behind SNAP as opposed to what's eligible, ice cream, uh, cotton candy, Coca-Cola. Um, I just really wanted to highlight the fact that SNAP is huge in New Mexico. Um, lots and lots and lots of our neighbors and friends and family members are on SNAP. Um, and uh, they have these, these benefits and they can choose to come to the farmer's market and use them or not. And I'm just grateful that so many SNAP participants are choosing to use their benefits you know, on local agriculture and in their, their local communities rather than always spending them at Walmart or you know, Kroger. Um, so I think it, it's really in our interest, not just to think about what we're doing for SNAP participants, but actually what they're doing for us and what they're doing for the state of New Mexico and agriculture here. Um, and again, there's an awful lot of us on SNAP. Um, it's not easy to qualify 
uh, you have to be a citizenship, you have to be a citizen uh, or your kids do. Um, you cannot make very much money. So um, it, we feel like there's some pretty good tight rules around it and that there's not a whole lot of space for a whole lot of shenanigans. Um, and so basically just really grateful that people are showing up and using their benefits with us. So this slide, this section of the training goes over what the SNAP rules are, that they're wood tokens with red writing on them, uh, that they are, that you can't give cash back for them. Uh, one of the big reasons that we have SNAP only vendors taking this training now is because there are lots of SNAP only vendors. So like meat vendors, bread vendors that don't really understand the difference, especially at markets that have debit and SNAP because they're both wood tokens. Um, but I've seen uh, like a meat vendor giving change for SNAP token and double up token or um, SNAP token have the vendor give cash change. And so in the past, we've only trained or had the um, double up vendors sign the vendor agreement, but we've switched to having SNAP and double up and fresh RX vendors sign the agreement now because there was just um, a lot of non-compliance, but not uh, not on purpose, non-compliance, but just non, because they didn't, they weren't aware. So we're training everyone now. So we're training everyone too, because and I know we sound like a broken record. Um, we know Sarah's program with SNAP did 2.5 million last year. It really makes a difference for the farmers. It makes a difference for the markets. And the federal government is the federal government. Uh, if we mess up, they will shut us down. Um, and that includes the folks using the SNAP, right? So we kind of have to keep an eye on anybody using any of these benefits. Um, and there's some scary legal language out there. Sarah and I were on a call where some, some other people who run programs like guys are kind of pushing back about eligibility. Why can't we sell nuts and that kind of stuff? And somebody pretty, pretty high up at the USDA says, cause we don't look good in orange jumpsuits, right? Um, there are consequences when these rules are broken and we don't want to come from a place of fear, but we do have to keep that in mind as we administer these programs. So basically what we've been told is three strikes you're out and that means three strikes for the entire state, not three farmers at one market messing up. Um, but if, if big enough mistakes are made three times, then we risk losing both Double Up and Fresh RX uh, and that market where the mistakes happen will lose SNAP. And we just don't want to lose all this money coming into the state. We want to keep it going for our neighbors and for our farmers. And uh, we had some feedback that this training could do without some of the threatening legal language. But um, when vendors will know that Kirsten and I are running these programs and will look us straight in the face and give um, uh, cash, cash back. Cash back that's trafficking. So there are a lot of vendors who don't take this seriously. And that is why we do keep the kind of stronger language that is, it's USDA language that they use. And we have copied some of it because there are definitely vendors who will, if they'll look at us straight in the face and do it, they'll do it for a USDA employee too. So there's some of the scary language. Yep we'll move on. And we also hope that by having this language in here and by having the trainings, if mistakes are made, that we can point out and say, but we did train everybody. We tried to play by the rules. We're doing our very best. Yep, we're reducing liability for us and you. Double up food bucks rules. Again, refunds and change, no cash. Um, we encourage folks to redeem their double up, the vendors to redeem their double up food box tokens at the market they receive them from. That doesn't always happen as you know, but we do encourage it. Anything else you wanna say about this slide, Sarah? 
No. Okay. The income limit for SNAP is based on your household size, by the way. And again, the eligibility that we've just hashed out, there's some simple ones here. Um, I'm sure folks can come to you as a market manager and ask, what does that mean? No added shots, sugars, salts, fats, or oils. And we'll have that conversation all season long. Also pointing out some of the stuff that, is, that you cannot use the double up tokens for. Fresh RX, again, the eligibility has not expanded for Fresh RX. It really is still um, fresh fruits and vegetables, New Mexico grown, very, very few uh, exceptions to that, just a few. Um, no frozen, no canned, no lightly processed. No. And again, the refund rules are still in place, no cash refunds. A list of things they can buy and they can't buy. I think we can do the test. The question, the question on this page is um, about if the the vendor is getting reimbursed from us or the market manager. So that's the kind of question that would come along with these pages if um, if, if we could see them right now. But we can also provide all of you guys with username and login so you can log in and take it if you are um, interested. But we can still take the test together. Um, let's look at some of these questions. Are any of these answers surprising to you? So um, can Fresh RX be used to buy 100% apple juice? Yes, it can, but guess what? So can what? What else can be used to buy 100% apple juice of the tokens? Anybody want to chime in? Both snap and double. Yep. Which tokens can be used to buy produce from Colorado? Snap did everybody, or... Yeah, did everybody know it's only Snap, right? We're still we're still really focused on New Mexico grown with both our pro, both our programs. A little reminder that bag fees and roasting fees are not covered by any any of the tokens. I guess I would reword this next question. Can Fresh RX be used for roasted green chili? The answer is no, but does anybody know what the common workaround is? Anybody want to chime in with, with what a lot of vendors will figure out pretty quickly? A lot of vendors will sell people fresh green chili for, and use their token. And then they can choose to roast that green chili for free. After the purchase is made, the product does not, with Fresher X and how it used to be with Double Up Food Bucks, if you buy the product fresh and then it gets roasted afterwards, that's how you buy roasted chili with Fresher X. And this last question is really just to help nail home for the vendors that can stand, you know, they're standing there, they have a bunch of different things at their booth. It can get so confusing just to remind them that it really is SNAP that's the only option for things like bread, milk, eggs, meat, cheese, all those things. And that, you know, that is the most basic thing on a Saturday, busy Saturday morning, uh, double up and fresh RX when it comes down to it, it really is about fruits and vegetables. It's the easiest way to, to explain it all. All right. Um, that should be the end of it. When they finish their training, they will have the option to print out that certificate and bring it to you. Yep. If you just stop sharing. Well, no, scroll down. Scroll down. And it'll pull up your course completed. And then see, they have a little celebration. <laughs> you can download the certificate. You can open it and take a look at it. Takes a second because it's fancy. 
Um, then the idea, of course, would be for them to go ahead and print it out and present it to you and display it at their booth. The other thing about this is it's, um, I actually think it's easier to use Talent LMS on your phone than on the desktop version. So if somebody does it on their phone, they can bring you the phone with that pulled up and just be like, see, here's my number and I've completed it. And then you can write down their number and give them a um, just a blank certificate with their information on it. Loretta's asking, can we check to see what vendors have done the training? Yeah, so the vendor should be able to tell you what their information is. Um, Talent LMS, I can download the information about who's taken it and who hasn't taken it. Um, so I'll be doing that every Thursday and I'll update an online vendor list that you can see on a Google spreadsheet from the market manager portal. And then there's a paper version of the training that we're about to talk about and market managers can put in information. So if a vendor took a paper training at another market, you'd be able to log in and see that as long as the other market manager has had a chance to put the information in. But I will be updating the uh, Talent LMS online vendor training completion information on Thursday mornings. Uh, will the vendor business name be on the spreadsheet? Yes, it will this year. We 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 fixed it. We'll have farm name now. <laughs> will last year's vendors be sent links? Yes. Yes. So we have everybody's information from last year. And as long as we have their email address, we will send them their information and we'll send you a list based on your vendor summary from last year. Some of you guys who have been around a while might remember that with the old vendor agreements, I would like keep them on file and I would give you a list of who you had an agreement with um, at the conference. I'll basically do the same thing. So we'll email your vendors with their link and their login info, but we'll also like, I'll send you guys um, spreadsheets with that information and- uh, And we'll send you a QR code. Yeah, we'll get to that. Yes. So um, if you're having trouble with that, let us know. If the vendor is having trouble with that, let us know. Um, Michael Green, who has been providing some of the technical assistance for this conference, is the technical assistance for Talent LMS as well. So we might ask you to ask him, or we might loop him into the email chain, but this year should be a whole lot easier than last year. Carrie, yes, the training is every year. We're sorry. We wish it could be for the duration of our grants or something like that but that is not the USDA's take on it. Yep, they require annual training for managers and vendors slash cashiers. So if it's an employee at a farm stand or a single point of sale outlet, then they also have to do it annually. So this is how it's worked hopefully for the vast majority of the vendors, they will do it online, encourage them to try to access talent LMS on their phones. So many of us are more comfortable on our phones than, or you know, don't even have a laptop anymore. So remind them that they can also try to do it on their phone, okay? We'll get to hands up in just a second. Um, George and Rhonda, just shake your head if your question is about online training. Or, but the actual website, actually talent LMS. Okay, okay. All right, George, what's your question? I have several people that their religion prevents sure, them. That, we'll, we're getting there. We'll get there next. Yeah, we, we will talk about the paper. You're right, George. You yep. got us. You got us. Uh, Rhonda, Joe, questions about the actual how to do talent at LMS. I don't, I think I'm, I'm going to ask that question. Um, so new vendors, could you just, quickly go through what we have to do for the new ones? Sure, we'll get there. Oh, okay. Yep. Um, let's turn our attention to vendors who do not have the ability to go do it online. Yep. George's kind of folk who um, probably have religious reasons or 
also very often are just not comfortable on a computer, don't have access to a computer, don't have phone accessibility. Um, that's when we go ahead and use a, a paper training. Again, we'd love to keep this to about 10% of all the vendors in the state. We would like for the vast majority to try to do it online, um, but we understand. We also understand that some people show up um, right as you're opening your market and you want them to be able to participate and they're only gonna be there for a very short time anyway, because they're selling something very seasonal like apples or something. Um, those are good folks to try to, um, if they can't do it on their phone right away, there won't be a turnaround time to, to send them an invitation. Then you go right ahead and hand them the paper booklet. Okay. Um, the paper booklets, do you all remember what they look like? Uh, they're pretty straightforward. They're both in English and in Spanish. In the middle is a certificate. Um, once somebody has read the information in that booklet, whether it's English or Spanish, they're going to come back to you and you're going to get busy with that piece of paper in the middle. Um, it's like filling out a form. You're going to fill that out. You're going to hold on to that. Okay. You hold on to the thing in the middle. You give them one of the fancy schmancy certificates. You issue it yourself. yourself. You're going to fill in their name. And then it's going to ask you for the vendor ID. And that's when you're going to have to re refer to whatever your three letter code is. And then the, assign them a number. So the first person to do a, a booklet training will be like SFI 001, 002, 003. So keep track of those zero zeros, right? Um, and then you'll send them on their way with their handy dandy certificate, which we hope they will display. If it's if it happens to be a vendor who's in a position like they have apples that they have that they're not going to use from their house and they're going to be there for two weeks with apples, then this process is actually really quick because you give them the booklet and you say, these are the programs that we have here. Your apples are eligible for all two or three tokens, depending on how your what programs your outlet's involved in. Uh, don't give them cash change. And then you can th have them take the, the booklet if they have more questions or want more information, they can look at it. If not, then you've already explained to them what they need to know in their very specific situation, but we still need um, the contract in the middle that you can rip out with their name and their email address and their uh, address and that they have signed it so that they do understand that they can't give cash. So in that kind of situation, just give them the booklet. It should be quick and easy. Uh, they're gonna have to come talk to you for a minute anyway to set up their table. Yes, Carol, absolutely. Also no discrimination. Be, right, yes. Yeah. Be respectful and no discrimination and don't give cash. Uh, yeah, the ID numbers do reset every year. Um, the answer to that is yes. Yes, we will send you lots of booklets. Yep. Um, and lots of blank certificates. And lots of blank certificates and sheet protectors. And we are basing how many certificates and sheet protectors and booklets to send you based on your registration with the NMFMA. So every year when you go and renew your membership with the NMFMA, you have a chance to also update your um, like time and place and all of that stuff about your market for the NMFMA website. There's also a place on there where you can say like maximum number of vendors every year. And that's the number that we're using to send that out. So if you haven't updated your information with CAT on the on the New Mexico FMA website for a couple of years, uh, you should probably revisit that and update your information with her and the number of vendors that you think you'll have this year so that we can send you the accurate inf amount of supplies and also so that your information is accurate on our website. 
once you've filled out that piece of paper in the middle, it's really important that we know what's on that piece of paper. Um, you can go to the market manager portal and enter it there, or you can scan a QR code we're going to be sending along to you um, on your phone, for example. And we'll take you to a form where you're actually going to sort of transfer the information from the, the little certificate in the middle onto a Google form for us. Um, and that will be stored as approved vendors um, for end of year reporting and other other things we need to do with it. So we'll send you uh, pieces of paper with these two QR codes on it. The, the blue one will send you directly to the ad authorized vendor. So if you've got one of those signed, filled out paper training version of the vendor agreement signed, scan that one with your phone. And there's also links in the market manager portal. So you don't have to do it this way at all. It's just an option if you're more comfortable doing it this way. It'll just take you straight to that page and you can enter your authorized vendor information. Or if you've got a vendor who needs to sign up to get a talent LMS login, they can scan the purple one right here and they um, will get sent directly to the Google form that we're going to use to sign people up. And that, for... that's truly for the new vendors. Yep. Somebody we don't know about. Somebody brand new. Because if they had a number last year and we have an email address for them, they'll get the invitation online from, from us, not from you. So a really good first question if somebody says, ah, the very first thing to say to them is, have you checked your email? for an invitation to take the course. So many of us don't pay attention to our emails. It can get in the way. But we'll also give you a, a list with their username and login. So if they were your vendor last year, you'll have a list that we'll email you that says um, like John's login is J Smith and his password is J Smith. Um, and, and for everybody who was your vendor last year, so if everybody you have at your market this year is a returning vendor from last year, you'll know what their password is and their login, in addition to the fact that we're, we will send something out to them. And that includes if they did a paper training last year, um, but they gave us an email address, we'll still send them uh, the option to take it online. All right, this is a, to me, a really important uh, slide. This is sort of an updated form for you all that it's been called the approved vendor list. It's also your year end sum summary. We've tried to combine the two. Um, and it's really something, don't think of it only as year end. You're going to try to fill this form out, uh, beginning filling it out as soon as people are approved to vend at your markets. The last part, the totals, you're gonna to save for the end of season, but the first few columns, you can start filling out as soon as people have been trained. Um, and yes, we're gonna to try to get lots of information, the, the business name and the name of the vendor, both. If we get both of those, it's super helpful. It helps us cross-reference at the end of the year who's doing what, because lots of vendors are, are at several markets and sometimes they're called copper pot, and sometimes they're called John Smith, and that can get very confusing very quickly. The vendor ID is the one that you're either going to assign them if they took a paper one or the one that they're showing you because they went online, right? And their zip code. Why do we need zip codes? Does anybody know why we care so deeply about zip codes? So uh, when we have Denise, go to the state legislature and uh, ask for recurring funds so that we can keep Double Up and Fresher X and grow both programs. I put together a little table for her and she takes it and that way she can talk to all of your legislators about what's happening in your county. So um, I, I don't give any personal information. There's no no name, no, of, name, no farmer names, no nothing, but by county, how much SNAP was redeemed by the farmers who live there, 
and how much double up was redeemed by the farmers who live in that county. And now how much fresh RX was redeemed in farmers at that county. And so that way she can go to legislators that are not Santa Fe legislators and say, hey, this program is doing so much great stuff for the people who live in your district. Can we please keep our funding? Or can we have more funding? And um, so there's no personally identifiable information, but if I don't have the zip codes, I can't give her the information that she needs to do her job. And that's why it's really important to make sure that we're keeping track of the zip codes. So the top form, it's a, it's a piece of paper and it lives, there's a copy of it um, in your manager guide we sent you. There's also, you can totally go onto the manager portal, click on it, print it out. It lives there. If you're doing both Double Up and Fresh RX, it's really in your interest to make sure you get the form that has both columns there. If you're only doing Double Up, there is a separate form that doesn't have my beautiful beat. Um, just pay attention to that. Um, and the, the paper is all you really need, but lots and lots of vendors, uh, lots and lots of market managers are starting to want to keep more records electronically. And so we have an option down here in the colorful part. Um, it's basically a spreadsheet that reflects the paper form. So if you're comfortable um, with spreadsheets, you can enter all this information as the, as the uh, season progresses at the end of every market day, and it will do all the math for you at the end of the season. You won't have to be sitting there with your adding machine or your calculator to give us these double up numbers, the snap total, the double up total, the fresh RX total, it'll happen on its own. Um, so some people are really uh, happy to do it that way, but we will accept either one. And we covered this a little bit earlier about why we're changing the vendor training. And um, for one thing, it's reducing paperwork. Like it might, it might seem overwhelming to be doing it online, but the vendors are only doing one agreement and one training per outlet now instead of, or per vendor instead of doing paperwork at three or four different markets they're just doing it once with us there's an increased consistency of training too so somebody in a completely different part of the state is going to get the same training that somebody else does so uh it'll be more consistent and um then greater consistency in vendor training again reduces liability for both the NMFMA and therefore fresh RX and double up and for your market with SNAP. So now we will be able to take questions, but I realized while we were going through this that to request a username and login now, instead of emailing it to us, there's a, a Google form that if you go to the market manager portal and you just uh, click on like request username and login, then it'll take you to a Google form. It'll update automatically for us. Michael will be able to see it and he'll be able to add people in a, a lot faster than what was happening last summer. Also, I would like to deeply apologize for how slow some of this was happening last summer. I had, I was flying back and forth between the East Coast and here with um, family stuff. And it, while we were trying to roll this out and it really slowed us down. So I do apologize. George, what you get to say? First of all, Sarah, I don't think that there is anybody that could possibly do as much work as you do and go through the horrendous thing that she had to go through. So apologies are not necessary. I think you've done a fantastic job. Kirsten, you are the most best communicator that uh, is around that, that I've talked to in a long time. 
and I think you've done a fabulous job too. Thank you. You're gonna make us blush, George. Go ahead. I'll let you. Thank you. Did you have a question? I probably forgot it. It's all good. We'll take the compliments instead. It makes us feel better than questions because sometimes we don't know the answers for sure. Rhonda, how about you? Well, my, mine are new questions that I don't think you've gone over. Sure. Where can we order posters for markets and the market posters and the double up? So go to newmexicofma.org and log in. And if you don't have a login, you can make one, or you can ask Kat what your login was or to reset your password or me, actually I can do it too. And then um, you'll be able to go to the online store and see all of the things that we've got. But you've got to log in to see all of it. If you don't log in, you won't see uh, some of the items. Is, does that include brochures? It does include brochures, yep. Okay. Sophia just put the, the link in the chat. Thank you, Sophia. Yes, thank you. Sure thing. There were a couple of questions. Um, I'm mm -hmm. just scrolling back in the chat right now. Me too. Looking so at for anything yeah. we might have yeah. missed. Yeah. Um, one was from the rail yards crew. Uh, hold on a sec. I'm going to jump up, jump on one while you're looking. Okay. Jackie, Jackie from Rayma, you can only accept fresh RX if you have fresh RX and believe me, you will know if you do. So, um, the fresh RX vouchers do travel all over state, but we're only at about 12 or 15 markets. So, um, if you don't have fresh RX tokens, don't take a fresh RX voucher. Okay. Thanks. Sure, but someday, someday we'll get there. We will just be everywhere and it'll be crazy. Okay, so from Anna and David at the Santa Fe Farmer's Market, they asked a process question. They asked if we enter the info from a paper form into the Google form, will it update to the approved vendor list? Yes, and it does that automatically and it makes us happy. Great. Can we still email a large user list instead of updating the Google form one by one, Sarah? Yeah, yeah. If you have a, a list of, you know, more than a couple people, or you need to do something, you want to start at the beginning of the year with a whole bunch of people you know who are going to be new instead of having them trickle in one or two at a time. Yes, send me a spreadsheet with yeah. first name, last name, farm name, email address. And if you know their zip code, then their zip code. But if you don't know their zip code at that point in time, just collect it later. And to Sylvia's point, um, Sylvia was asking about whether this training is good at all markets. Yeah, if you take the talent LMS training, you can participate in SNAP, Double Up, and FreshRx at any market as a vendor. I mean, you have to be a vendor there first. Right. Oh, you you have to be, don't, yeah. don't you can't show, just show up. up. But if you, if you normally vend at three different markets, it's one training for all three. And all of these invitations to the different vendors should be going out pretty soon. But oh, they can't see you. Did you turn it on the video? Yeah, they can hear me. Okay. So, um, the Santa Fe Farmers Market is already starting to do their vendor training and they're a little bit our guinea pig. So as soon as we get all the kinks worked out with them and Michael and I have a chance to sit down and get the vendor training things all together, then we'll start sending them out. If there's a vendor who is only vending at a market that happens starting in July, then they might get their training a little bit closer to June, but if it's an outlet that opens, you know, in April, 
or May, then they're going to get it a little bit earlier. So um, some of the markets that are really rural, just they don't start until July. And if we train them in March, it'll not be relevant. Be relevant. Yeah, you'll just forget in the meantime. So we're going to try and stagger it like that. Do we have more slides? I'm not sure if you guys answered this, but um, Carrie had a question that's more specific to the Socorro market about- I answered her, she did. Oh, you did, you okay, did. cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, Virginia, if you send out a spreadsheet of, of brand new vendors, that would be great. That would be great. We have one more thing that's not really only vendor training that we wanna just uh, bring up with you real, real fast because we're, we're coming toward our two o'clock. Um, we're thinking of holding regular office hours during the upcoming season. So what that'll be is we'll have a Zoom meeting like this, the links will get sent out uh, and we'll do two that are the same. So like, let's say there's June office hours, there'll be one during the week, during work daytime, but then there'll be another one in the evening or on the weekend when people who are doing other full-time jobs can go to an afternoon or I'm sorry, an evening or a set of Sunday, Saturday uh, office hours, but we'll have different topics of conversation. Like we might talk about marketing or end of year reporting in October. Uh, if you guys have ideas or you're interested in something like that, then we'll, we're gonna try and start doing that this year. So be thinking about um, topics because we're really open to hearing what you all wanna dig deeper into. Um, so there'll be a theme. We wanna dig into that one topic deeper, but we will also just be available for whatever kind of questions you might have come up with since the last time we spoke and you're more than welcome to log on and, and ask any questions at all. And yes, usernames and passwords for Talent LMS will expire. That's a that's part of Talent LMS. We cannot train, we cannot have invitations out for every single vendor at the same time. It doesn't have the capacity for that. So some people have to kind of age out of the system so that we can make sure that we can get everybody invited and trained. The um the talent LMS software will only have a certain amount of people who can be active at the same time. And there's about 850 vendors, but the, the vendors who start vending in the springtime can get removed for vendors that start selling later. Like there are some vendors that only participate in their local market in November because that, that's what they're growing. That's when they can sell. So the people who start vending in the spring can, as they're taking the training, they'll get made inactive and that'll make space for everybody else. All right, we're right up to two o'clock. We wanna let you go and have the rest of your day. Any last questions? Tiny announcement from Rail Yards. All are invited to join us for dinner at Song Hill in Albuquerque at 6 p.m. tomorrow to network and dream all things markets. Awesome. Hope to see you there, they write. So if you haven't been to Sawmill Market yet, it's really fun. Um, and that's a great, uh, a great invitation. Thank you, Rail Yards. Hopefully next year in person, everybody. That's what we're hoping. All right, well, thanks for coming, everyone. We really appreciate your attention. We know it's been a long day. Um, but uh, I think we all got through it and we'll be talking to you all season. That's what we're here for. Reach out, out to us with questions. And we'll we'll see um, for just a minute if anybody has more questions they need to ask. Sure, Celia. Yeah, and I have a quick rundown of things to keep in mind for the next oh. days, if that's okay. Um, yeah, so thank you guys so much. Just please remember we have our two hour annual WIC training tomorrow. Uh, there are some really important changes for 2022 that you guys are going to want to know about, and there will be plenty of time for Q&A. So come here about how WIC will be working this year. First thing tomorrow, starting at 9 a.m. <clears throat> 
We're also going to have a presentation on indigenous farming by Chile Yazi, a really important legislative update. The uh, urban and rural farmers market open forums, which will be a really great space for some open conversation and networking. And if you are an NMFMA member in good standing, don't forget to vote. So be sure to check your email for that detailed agenda of those sessions, um, important documents for you to have and the Zoom link. Everyone enjoy your evening. Sylvia, what can we do for you? Oh, you're on mute, Sylvia. Um, I didn't see the agenda for Thursday and Friday um, in the email. It's they it must be there, right? Yes, it is in the email that you received. Okay. You'll get another email tomorrow, though, too, to check again. Okay, great. I really appreciate that. And thank you very much for all you do. It's great. Hi, Sabra. It's good to see some faces. It's nice to see faces because when you're sitting here with the screen, all I can see is Sarah and that's terrible. Although earlier I was watching Denise's face.